Over the last few months, I have covered various types of mods. Good mods, bad mods, emotionally scarring mods, and of course, me and you. How are you still living? There is penis that may have touched her esophagus from the bottom. But there's one type of mod that I have been dreading to review, and that's a multiple route mod. A multiple route mod for those who are uninformed is a type of mod that has, well, multiple routes or endings similar to main DDLC. Okay. The reason why I have been putting this off is because of an unsureness of how I would structure such a review. But since the creator of Doki Doki Encore himself personally reached out to me to request a review of his mod, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Doki Doki Encore is what I would like to dub a legacy mod. This is a term that I made up and that I used to refer to mods created within the first two years of DDLC's release. These mods essentially set the precedent for mod makers and future mods to be released. The best examples of legacy mods would include Blue Skies, the premier multiple route mod, and Exit Music, which I've already reviewed on this channel. You know, there's that card on the top right, you can go click on that and watch that if you haven't. <clears throat> Anyways, I've been kind of bending the rules a bit calling Encore a legacy mod, since it was fully released in 2020, three years after the release of DDLC. However, I will still call it a legacy mod because its roots go all the way back to August of 2018. Yes, you heard me right, Encore took nearly two full years to be released. What the fuck? What? Bruh. This is an insanely long development period for a mod. To put this into perspective, EMR Exit Music Redux took 17 months to release, which I've also reviewed on this channel, by the way. <clears throat> Encore took an extra five, five months to be released. I would say that this is the longest development cycle for a mod, but Blue Skies has even Encore beat clocking in at a whopping 25 months. And of course, you can't forget about Vigilante or A Month with Natsuki, but uh, that, we'll save that for another time. Hey yo, what the fuck? Are you done? You done, right? You done, right? So, was the two years enough or did it need a little more time in the oven? In this video, we look to answer that question and more. So sit back, relax, Go get something to eat or drink as we dive headfirst into Doki Doki Encore. Okay, so I'm going to discuss the story of Encore, kind of. As I said, this mod is very choice heavy with 8 endings in total, so I'm not going to go over it in great detail. But instead, I'll go over my playthrough in particular and just give you the cliff notes of the other routes. That way, you can still download the mod and play it for yourself without too many spoilers. Right at the beginning, you were asked a couple of questions. Since Encore takes place right after the festival, which never happened in the main game, how you answer will determine what route you'll start off on. If you accept it Sayori's confession in the base game, you will start off on her route with the option to switch over to either Natsuki or Yuri later, depending on who you helped out on Sunday. If you friendzoned her like the piece of shit you are, Everybody hates you, you would do better off dead, just go kill yourself. Then you will start off on whoever you helped out on Sunday. You may have noticed that I said start off on, that's because Encore does something that no other mod, at least to my knowledge, has done and allows you to switch routes mid-game and yes, you can do this multiple times. Also, you can't start off on Monica route, but there is a route for her in the mod, so there is indeed something for everyone. Encore officially begins with MC being visited by Monica in his dreams. She tells him about how she's like really bad at coding or something and how It's rewind time. He wakes up to a base Sayori 
barging her way into his room. Depending on what route you chose at the beginning will determine the dialogue you get here. Although, there aren't any significant changes outside of dialogue. I realize now that if I were to discuss all the differences between each route, it would take me even longer to finish this video, so I'm just going to talk about the events that are consistent across all routes unless I deem it important enough to bring up. MC and Sayuri head to school where nothing relevant happens until it's club time, as per usual. Remember that Encore takes place after the festival, and this is the first club meeting after that fact. We come to find out that it was a failure and the club got no new members at all. Monica is the last to enter and calls an emergency meeting. Amogus. She essentially just starts coping to everyone and is really upset that the festival didn't go as planned. One by one, everyone attempts to cheer her up and not make such a big fucking deal and it seemed to work. Monica calms down and the club does the usual club things. I wonder if Natsuki will come under that closet in June. You spend time with whoever you want, just keep in mind that these choices can change whose route you're on. Monica does a little trolling and moves Natsuki's Del Monte Mango Can Collection again, so MC goes over to help her. After the club, MC and Sayori walk home together. Since I did go down Sayori route, the two of them spend the evening together at his house. When MC goes to sleep, he has the first in a series of nightmares that he will have throughout the month. Depending on who you picked will determine who the nightmare will be about. During the nightmares, a silhouetted figure talks to MC and tries to convince him that everything he's doing is pointless and that everyone's going to die anyways. Cock and ball torture. I wonder where we've seen this concept before. Does he have no conscience? Does he have no heart? Do you have no soul? You son of a bitch! I don't know if Monica appears in every nightmare in the game, but she definitely appears in most of them. Tuesday is very basic and nothing important happens until the afternoon. If you pick Sayori, her and MC will play Mario Kart Wii and somehow this motherfucker loses! Hashtag not my MC! He can't seem to do anything right! I, I can't believe it! I, I cannot believe it! If you don't pick her, then they just have an emotional moment instead. Later that night, MC goes to sleep and has yet another nightmare. But Monica makes this one a lot more intense by forcing MC to watch one of the girls slowly die in front of him. Wednesday comes and MC and Sairi walk to school together as usual. But for the first time in forever. Shut the fuck up, you cunt! The school day has some sort of plot relevance. Hallelujah, praise the Lord! We see MC go to the cafeteria during lunch to talk to Monica. Oh wait, there's something I forgot to mention that happens on Tuesday. That if I don't mention it now, this next scene will make absolutely no sense. On Tuesday, MC is tasked with collecting poems for an event for this school's version of BuzzFeed. What world does no mean yes? No means no. There was a misinput, misinput, calm down! You calm the fuck down! There was a misinput! One of the girls will leave a confession letter among the stack of poems and leaves you to deal with a love triangle. If you picked Natsuki, it'll be Yuri. If you picked Yuri, it'll be Natsuki. And if you picked Sayori, whoever you hung out with on Sunday will be the one to confess. This is what MC goes to talk to Monica about. He finds her and pulls her aside to go talk to her on the roof. You would think that Monica would be the worst person to go to for relationship advice, and you would be right. However, she does give good advice and tells him to follow his heart, but acts kinda sus by dropping subtle hints that he should be with her instead. They finish and head back to the cafeteria and MC decides to stay and have lunch with Monica and her clique. After lunch, you have the choice to walk back to class with Monica or by yourself. If you want to go down Monica route, it would be a good idea to say yes to this. But since no one with any sort of decency would want to be with Monica, the only right choice is no. It's facts! It's facts! It's in our facts! These facts is in our facts! It's in our facts! Well, that's it for anything not club related in this school. So let's head to the club already, dammit! Oh wait, 
What happens in the club is determined by whose route you're on. And besides, nothing really special happens anyways. But you- But just you wait until later, alright? After the club is ended, you spend the afternoon with your batty of choice. Once you're done with that, you head back home, go to sleep, and have yet another nightmare. Although this one is not visual and it's just Monica balding and spurging at you for picking anyone else but her. That's all there seems to be as MC wakes up from it. But something seems off with their current situation. You come to find out that this is also part of the nightmare as your authority of choice will waste no time in fucking killing you in the most terrifying ways possible. MC wakes up from the nightmare by the sound of an alarm.mp3. He meets Sayuri outside and she says that you look like shit. You then have the choice to either tell her about the nightmares or lie. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> The two of them then head to school together as to be expected by now. We then get to the club for the day and remember when I said to wait until later? Well, it's later. MC shortly after walking through the door is dragged outside by whoever wrote the confession letter and they confess to him in person. You are then given the choice to either be a cheating bastard and accept or politely friendzone them. Obviously, I said no because I would like to think of myself as a decent human being. After friend zoning either Natsuki or Yuri in the most polite and respectful way that I can possibly think of, they proceed to lose their fucking minds and go postal on the club. Okay, maybe not literally go postal, but just starts bawling and seething to everyone in the club. You are coping, coping and seething. You just can't accept what you're seeing. Yes, you're coping, coping and seething. The truth it is scalding, and now you are mauling and coping. I mean, it pretty much turns into like an MW2 lobby, if you remember those. Let me just add real quick that Sayuri gets treated like absolute shit during this scene for literally no reason. So much so that I legitimately feel bad for her. Even though this is a game and none of this is real. The fighting continues for a while until a rightfully angry MC calls them out on their bullshit in the most MC way possible. Get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. He's fired! I mean, come on! Throw some hands with these bitches. Equal rights, equal fights. Hashtag not by MC! MC goes home and your waifu wants to come over and spurg about what just happened. You have the choice to say yes or no to her. Afterwards, MC goes to bed and has the last dream involving Monica. It's just her saying that, tomorrow is the day, and tells MC, don't help them. And now we are here, the dawn of the last day. Everything is the status quo until we go to the club. Monica calls an emergency meeting yet again, Amogus. and MC tells everyone that he is in a relationship with, insert girl you want to smash here, and that nothing is going to change that. Insert your waifu here, tries to tell the club about their, her specific problem, but is unable to. They then run out of the club and into an empty classroom. MC then goes to track her down and attempts to comfort her. Monica then appears in the classroom and goes sicko mode on everything, deleting your waifu in front of you and then sending you into space. She then strangles MC until he goes unconscious. When he comes to, Monica reveals to him the truth of the situation, that this is all just a video game, and that he is just a stand-in for you, the player, and that Monica is essentially a god in this world. Oh no, we're not done here. You're gonna have to pump a lot more out if you want to put a baby in me. He quickly accepts this as, for crying out loud, he's in fucking space. I would believe that Half-Life 3 would be released tomorrow if I were in MC's shoes and Monica was the one to tell me. 
He tries to convince Monica to undo everything that she did, but she ain't having any of it. She wants to get rid of the others entirely, as they are causing the game to be unstable. But she won't do it without your consent. In common law, the age of this signaling adulthood is presumed to be 14 in boys and 12 in girls. Tom, what is the age of consent? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Monica brings all the others back to mess with you and convince you that deleting them is the best thing for them. She makes a console appear with a pre-entered code that will delete the others and leaves you with one final choice. Press enter, walk away, or try to enter something else into the console. I chose to enter something else. Now, you're given the opportunity to enter something into the console, and if you enter one of the Doki's names, Monica not included, then you will remove Monica's administrative privileges and free the Doki's from her. The girls will proceed to have some fun with Monica for all the shit she put them through. Well, if you chose the previous choice, then this will actually be the final choice of the game. To step in and stop them from fucking Monica up, or to do nothing and let them kill her. There's a catch though. Monica stated earlier that the game is directly tied to her character file. So if she were to die, so would everyone else. I said screw it and let them kill her anyways because fuck Monica, all my homies hate Monica. Natsuki, Sayuri, and Yuri each slowly torture and eventually kill Monica. And with her death, the rest of the game breaks down and is officially destroyed. And this marks one of the endings to Encore. As I said, there are 8 endings in total and me telling you all of them defeats the purpose of this video, which is to incentivize you to actually play the mod for yourself. Also, I don't feel like making a 3 hour long video so I'll leave it here. I'll encourage you to finish this video and if you're still interested in playing, the download link will be in the description below. Okay, so now that you have an idea of what Encore is about, let's talk about it. Let's go! The first thing I want to bring up is the first thing that anyone sees when you first start a mod, and that's the main menu. The menu itself is fine, but the song that plays on loop while you're on the title screen is an absolute banger. Somehow, the creator of Encore must have gotten permission to use Doki Doki Forever as the main menu track and as an added bonus, whenever one of the Dokis are singing a verse in the song, their sprite will jump to the foreground. I mean, is it rude to say that this mod peaked before you even hit play? Maybe, but it's kind of the truth. I feel like the idea of having multiple routes was good in theory. Game theory. But Encore does not give these routes their own unique story, rather instead just changes some of the elements to reflect whose route you're on. When comparing Encore to Blue Skies, it becomes apparent how this mod failed in this aspect. When I go to play a mod with multiple routes, I'm expecting a drastically different story depending on which route I chose. If I chose Natsuki's route, I shouldn't have a similar experience on everybody else's route. Encore is essentially a linear story in multiple routes clothing. Blue Skies is different in that it makes every route in the game truly unique, adding more replayability than the Encore despite having 5 fewer endings. Who you decide to designate official waifu status to literally does nothing except determine which ending you get. But if you kill Monica off, then this doesn't even matter either. Now I do have to praise how well the nightmare scenes were done. They follow the rain clouds formula, with each one growing in intensity, with it starting off with Monica just telling you that the Dokis are hopeless and to not be with them, and the next one being a bit more disturbing as Monica shows their deaths to you, and the last one being an attempt to at least somewhat fool you into believing that it isn't a nightmare just to pull the rug out from under you, and have MC be killed by your waifu of choice. Ah! 
these nightmare scenes might just be the best part of the actual mod itself, just because they're entertaining to witness. Alright, so I'm going to flash a few images on screen right now, and I want you to formulate an opinion on them. Oh my god! If you were like me, then you are under the impression that these are fucking terrible. These are all custom CGs that are in Encore. When I was going down Sayuri's route in my playthrough and this popped up during the second nightmare, I spent more time focusing on what the artist did to Sayori rather than what Monica was doing to her in that moment. That isn't very poggers. Here's another one you can see when going down Yuri route, and can I just ask, what did you do to my mans? Franklin the turtle looking ass over here, mans looking like Master Ugwe right here. I know art is subjective, but I think a Damien Hirst painting looks better than this. This is the worst $100,000 a night and you get trash, literal trash. They have just random fucking dumb stickers on the windows. The bar is made out of medical waste. And then you have pills as art pieces, literally just <laughs> pills behind glass. This is baffling. Oh, and don't get me started on the grammatical errors. I know that in mods of this magnitude that there are bound to be at least one error at some point, but in my playthrough alone, I guarantee you that I encountered at least 10 of them. It became so that every time I sat down to play it, I was expecting to see at least 2 or 3. If I saw this many in my one and only playthrough, I could only imagine how many there actually are throughout the mod. A mod with four routes and eight total endings. At first, I just chalked it up to the creator's native language not being English. But then you get to the credits and see that people play tested this. How did this many errors get past all of them and get put into the final product? This has to be some of the worst quality control that I think I've seen in a mod that wasn't a shitpost mod. What the fuck were they thinking? Okay, ran over. Let's talk about something positive now. Monica in this mod, I feel, is characterized pretty well. Encore follows the Rain Clouds formula again, with having her be mostly hands-off in the beginning, and having her be more and more aggressive in her attempts to win over the player as you play the mod. Which I explained in my Rain Clouds review, is the correct way to portray Monica in a mod that is directly tied to the main game. Whether it's taking place during the main game, or in this case, a what if scenario of what would happen if the game didn't reset before the festival. Natsuki and Yuri do act a bit off, but you can probably attribute that to Monica tampering with them to make them more bitchy. And Sayori is just Sayori. I mean, it would be a tall task to somehow mess her up. Hey yo, what the fuck? The last thing I want to talk about is the ending or the endings, since there are 8 of them. You know what, we can just ignore the other 7 because I'm making the Monica death route officially canon. Fuck Monica, I hate Monica, I hate Monica. 10 out of 10 mod, can we just end the review right here? I'm not like other YouTubers that would make a review and lie to their audience just to generate views. Are you sure about that? When it came to making this Encore review, I could have picked a side. I could have said that Encore is a great mod with little to no flaws that everyone should play. I could have said that Encore is absolute garbage and that I wouldn't even wipe my own ass with it. Yeah, I just took a mean ass shit in Chipotle. Instead, I chose neither. I chose to sit the fence on this one. Encore, in my opinion, is an average mod. It does some things well, such as the inclusion of Doki Doki Forever and the Nightmare Saints. It also does some things poorly, such as the art or all the numerous grammatical errors. Then they feel like actual gods, heaven ascent beings, who once they pass 10th grade English, they now must correct every little mistake on the internet. Because their parents beat them. 
Alright, so it's time for your annual baiting. It's the same criticism I gave to Exit Music Redux. However, what makes that mod stand out more is the insane amount of effort that went into all the small things. EMR, despite, in my opinion, and a lot of y'all's as well, apparently, being a subpar mod in the story department, it still delivers more replay value than Encore, with the bonus content in the quality of life update that was released not that long ago, it shows that Wretched Team really wanted to create the best experience possible when making Redux. It's just that they missed the mark on the story in my opinion. Remember back at the beginning how long I said both Redux and Encore both took to be made? EMR Exit Music Redux took 17 months to release, which I've also reviewed on this channel by the way. <clears throat> Encore took an extra five, five months to be released. Encore had a lot of time to be made, but all the time in the world can't fix a flawed concept. Having branching storylines that converge is cool in theory, but just simply didn't work here. Not saying I didn't have any fun playing the mod, I certainly did, but when comparing Encore to other DDLC mods I've reviewed, each of them has something unique and special about them that makes them stand out from the rest. Exit Music, in my opinion, is the greatest mod ever made. Redux is a remake with a ton of wasted potential. The mod with a name that's way too long is a fun Natsuki-based mod that people would play after playing one of the last two mods I just mentioned. Rain Clouds is an experience of the main DDLC game through the eyes of Sayori. Natsuki Chill is my preferred way of exiting this plane of existence. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. And Me and You is one of the most well written mods I've ever seen, and also this. Not we here the rare gift from God. All of these mods have something I can say to differentiate them from the rest. But what is there to say about Encore? That it's the one where you can just kill Monica off? That it's a worse blue skies? This mod could have been so much more, but the converging routes just takes away all replayability because as the saying goes, all roads lead to Rome, all routes lead to Monica deleting the game, or trying to. You see that? That's a stupid bitch. This is just another example of wasted potential, similar to Redux. I will say this much. If you're bored and want a mod to play that's long and has lots of choices, then this is a good mod for you. But I would always suggest Blue Skies or Fruits instead, because they are simply better than Encore at its own game. Well, you made it to the end of the video. I just want to say that if you're still interested in downloading and playing Encore for yourself, even after hearing me call it mid for the entire video, the download link will be in the description. And if you enjoyed this review and want to see more like it, hit that like button and subscribe and turn on that bell so that you will be informed when I make another video for this is the one stop shop for daily DDLC content. And if you have a mod you would like me to review in the future, drop it down in the comments below. I read all comments and who knows, I might pick yours. And if I do, I'll shout you out in said video. And with that being said, as always, until next time, so long comrades.